Hello everyone and welcome to the World Rapid and Blitz Championship. We're first gonna have the three days of Rapid and then the two days of Blitz. Uh, and uh, unlike uh, for all the years uh, before this year, we're not gonna have 15 rounds of Rapid. We're actually gonna have 13 rounds of Rapid. So that's uh, one of the things that we you guys um, uh, need to watch out for when checking out the games. Uh, and it's gonna take place uh, from 26th to 28th of December. So uh, over the, uh, the next three days, like I said, and the prize fund is $350,000 with the first place being $60,000. Now this is a game from uh, round three. I just got home uh, and uh, I, uh, well, uh, decided to show, show a game. We're starting off with a game uh, Magnus played as he is the defending world champion. He's the world champion in all time formats uh, currently existing except Chess 960 uh, that still belongs to Wesley So. Uh, so let's uh, check it out. And for those of you who still haven't, uh, the link is in the description below, not link, my email. If you guys want to be a part of this year's uh, Chess Brings People uh, people Together video, do send me uh, some of your uh, nice uh, photos or videos where you teach someone how to play chess. Um, we've done, I think, already three or four of them. I, I, I think three of them. But now, that being said, let's check out the game. Uh, first of many that we will cover. And of course, use hashtag suggestion to suggest some of the uh, nicer games that have been played. So Magnus has the white pieces and he opens with d4. Uh, we have d5, uh, knight to f3, knight to f6, and g3. Magnus goes for the uh, sort of a Catalan uh, variation. We have c6 uh, and now c4. Uh, we have d captures on c4 and bishop to g2 now. This bishop will be very useful uh, on this diagonal. And b5 now. For the moment defending the c4 pawn, we have castles by Magnus and now bishop to b7. Uh, we have knight to e5, putting pressure on the c6 pawn, even though it's defended twice uh, for the moment, but black will have to develop the knight somehow. So e6, we have b3 by Magnus challenging this um, uh, pawn, we have c captures on b3, a captures now getting the semi-open a file for his rook, and finally black has to continue development, uh, although you could continue with bishop to e7, but black decides to go for knight b to d7, uh, it's a known move and uh, it's uh, one that works out very nicely for black, so you give back the c6 pawn, but you will get some very nice development, so knight captures on c6, uh, interestingly the position has been reached before and white only tried knight c3 and knight to d2, but Magnus accepts the pawn, he plays knight captures, captures on c6 and the queen to b6 now putting pressure on the knight and Magnus defends it with d5 so if black captures Magnus will open up the e file and uh, well, well we'll try to uh, somehow attack the black king even though okay black can just develop the bishop and castle but that's two moves and he will be able to save his knight uh, via knight to a5 so you don't really have to worry about anything here now black could capture he could capture with the pawn he could capture with the knight he could play bishop to c5 so many options here black decides to capture with the knight and magnus goes knight to a5 now he puts pressure on the bishop here you can't really do anything about this so rook to d8 rook to c8 also interesting it's, uh, it's also an open file, but uh, the queen is on d1, so uh, at least for rapid rook to d8 makes more sense. And now knight captures on b7, not only capturing the very strong bishop, but also uh, getting that queen to b7 uh, also very important. So queen captures and knight to c3, now putting pressure on the knight and basically offering a queen trade. So Drev can uh, either, uh, you know, just continue developing or uh, trade queens here. He decides to trade queens, knight captures on c3. Bishop captures on b7, knight captures on d1, rook captures on d1, and bishop to c5, uh, black continues development, and if you look at the position now, black is up a pawn, but Magnus has the bishop pair, and it's not going to be easy to defend those queenside pawns. So here, bishop to b2, if Magnus wants, he can also play bishop to c6 and try and keep the king in the center of the board, but Magnus says, nope, you're very welcome to just castle, uh, the king might even be uh, better suited to remain in the center of the board but uh, it, it's hard to say it's the bishop pair so maybe king safety first so here drev castles and rook a to c1 now magnus uh, fully mobilizes his pieces uh bishop to b4 and now rook to d4 attacking the bishop here and just knight to c5 going for an all-out trade we have rook captures on b4 rook captures uh, knight captures on b7 and rook captures on b5 magnus wins back his pawn so rook to d7 and bishop to a3 now magnus Magnus attacks the rook here, rook f to d8, doubling up on the d file, and rook to c6 now. So what do you play here? 
Uh, we have h6, black wants to make some breeding room for the king so you don't get um, uh, back rank checkmated. And now rook to a6, going after the a7 pawn and now knight to d6, you have to defend this pawn. Uh, but Magnus is more than happy to go into a rook endgame. So bishop captures on d6, rook captures on d6, now rook captures on a7. And from Magnus being down upon, you can see that black in order to uh, really, uh, release uh, some tension uh, uh, from the position had to give up not one but two pawns and now it's actually Magnus who's up a pawn. But it's a rook and pawn endgame so uh, maybe one pawn is not enough. We have g5 by Drev and now rook b to b7, putting pressure on the f7 pawn. So rook to f8 and now rook to d7. Magnus wants to trade off a pair of rooks and then try and win the rook and pawn endgame. Rook to b6, we have rook a to b7 and here we have a trade. Captures, captures and now rook to c8. Now black will have to fight off the, the pass pawn and the best way to do this is to put the rook behind the pass pawn. So g4, very important move. Magnus uh, controls the uh, h5 and f5 squares. We have rook to c3 and now Magnus starts pushing his pawn. We have pawn to b4, king to g7 and now king to g2. We have rook to b3. Of course we have to put the rook behind the pass pawn and now Magnus just starts pushing his pass pawn. King to g6, now comes b6. We have f5 uh, and now h3. And now probably best for black is to just play f4 uh, and then you will always uh, have this very nice setup here. But not only that, you will be able to hide, hide your king behind the, uh, the e pawn because the one thing you don't want to allow uh, is for black to, uh, white to play some like rook b8. We're going to push the pawn to b7 and then you're going to get checked by the rook and the white promotes his pawn to a queen. So, but instead, uh, Drev played h5 and this allows Magnus uh, a lot more time to... Uh, uh, well, create something out of this position. So G captures on H5 with check. King captures, this would be uh, the mistake Drev uh, was talking about, and now rook to b8. Now if uh, the pawn comes to b7, then we just play rook h8 to check and bring a queen into the game. So black has to go back with the king. King g6 with uh, b7 threatening this check, and now king to g7. Uh, and okay, now you can't um, uh, deliver check, but you can do something else. Magnus starts with e3, we have e5 and now f3 here. Of course, uh, you cannot capture the pawn, if you capture the pawn, then we just sacrifice our own rook and bring a queen into the game with check. So instead we have rook to b1 and now we have e4 by Magnus. F captures on e4, F captures on e4 and rook to b3 cutting off the white king from entering the position but now Magnus just played king to f2 and it was in this position on move 44 that uh, Alexei Drev resigned the game as there is nothing more to be done here. Uh, point is that the king can't really move. If you play king f6, of course, we just uh, deliver one check and bring a queen into the game. You can't even play something like king to f7. That's also a completely uh, losing because just rook h8. And now if the pawn is captured, just uh, check. And once the king moves, we're going to capture this rook. So the only thing you could do is start checking the white king. But of course, then we play king e3, checking d2, checking c3. And now our king goes up the board and picks up these pawns. To give you an example, let's rook b6, king c4, rook b1, black has to uh, keep control of the b file, king to d5 attacking the pawn, and now let's say rook b5 check, we're gonna play king here, king to h7, you have to play something, king f6, and now again, the king has the moves, if you go here, you, you just get checkmated, so that doesn't work, you have to move the rook, rook b1, and then we pick up this pawn, then we pick up this pawn, and then we are of course completely winning, we will have all the pawns, and Drev knows this, and uh, that's why he resigned the game after king to f2. So there we have it, a very nice game by Magnus. Magnus started with a win, then he got a draw in the second round, and then again a win in the third round, so uh, he goes back to board one after, after three rounds. Uh, we'll see what happens, will he be able to defend his title, as there are many, many uh, incredible players here, and it's not going to be easy. If you have a game that you yourself enjoyed and think uh, others would enjoy too use hashtag suggestion in the comments or send me an email or you know use any social media uh, and i will check it out and hopefully present it uh, so yeah that's the game hope you guys enjoyed it uh, i would like to thank marcus busse uh, checkmate epilepsy catherine matriarch uh, jack schroeder uh, and uh, jeffrey redenor for for your contribution to my channel thank you a lot i really appreciate it as usual you can check two of my previous videos here thank you all for watching and i will see you soon continuing the coverage of this uh, wonderful event uh, until it finishes. Uh, thank you all. I will see you soon and have an excellent rest of your day.